Over the last four months, I've had problems with bulges, not the good type. I went from a mildly annoying bad back last autumn to not being able to get off the floor a few weeks ago. It ruined my ability to exercise, stay in shape, work, and just enjoy life. And ironically, got as bad as it did because I tried to fix it the wrong way. So now that I'm on the mend, five things I'm finally doing right. Bulges. Do you like that? Ever since I can remember, my back would go every six months or so. Way before I started getting in shape in my 30s, I'd be picking something up quickly, like a burger, and ping, spasms, pain, five or six days, unable to do anything but just sit still and eat. Wasn't all bad. When I decided to get in shape and start exercising, the same thing still happened, but I'd go and see a physio or a chiropractor, and my recovery would be down to two or three days, and that became normal life. Every six months, three days of discomfort, I lived with it. But last autumn it went ping, while doing some heavy deadlifting. And I'm no gym expert, so I was probably doing those with all the form of a 14-year-old TikToker dry scooping protein powder, dreaming of a Gymshark contract, so my fault. I thought, no big deal, I head off to the Cairo, three days later, I'll be good. But that didn't happen. I was back in the gym, in fact, I was competing in races, but my back never got properly better. My visits to the therapist became more regular, and what I could do became more restricted going into Christmas was doing very little for fear of causing the problem to get worse and by January I'd pretty much stopped all activity in the hope that it would allow my back to just sort of settle down and recover for good and steadily it got worse. The only thing I did that month was a couple of hours on the cycle track for this video the next day I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't get in that car properly, I couldn't ride my motorbike in case I had a spasm on it and rode into a tree. At one point I went to the cinema to watch Argyle after 20 minutes, I wanted to get up and leave. I was stuck. I couldn't get up. I was in too much pain to fall asleep as well. I had to endure the whole thing. It was the most uncomfortable experience ever. And so convinced I had a serious problem and keen to have some evidence of that to show here as to why I was doing no exciting content, I got an MRI. And the report that came with it showed degenerative disc disease, a disc bulge, annular posterior fissure, a disc protrusion, more bulges, bilateral narrowing, the list went on and on. Your body may have gone, but you're still here. And then things got better. An orthopedic surgeon got in contact after they saw me moaning about my back on a podcast. They looked at my MRI and said, yeah, your back is a bit of a mess, because you're 50 years old, what do you expect it to look like? If it was a car, it would be in a museum. But none of those things on the MRI report are necessarily that bad. They're really the equivalent of just having grey hair and wrinkles. They come with age, but won't always cause you problems. Your back is basically George Clooney. I said, but I can't get off the floor some days. Something is very wrong. They said, sure, you no doubt did tweak or pull it. Those TikTok deadlifts might well have done that, but there was probably other things you were doing around that time that didn't help either. I said, I can't think of anything. They said whatever the original injury, your back muscles have gone into overprotective modern parenting mode. Please think of the children! Not letting you do anything, just in case. Unlike a chubby 10-year-old confined to their PlayStation 24-7, your overall health has gone downhill because of an irrational fear of stranger danger if you play in the street. I said, I don't know if I need to be stretching or buying pepper spray. What's the solution? So they told me. And coming up are the five things that I've now implemented to get to where I am now fixed at last. Although before we dive in, I'm not an expert. I have zero qualifications in anything. This is just what I did and appears to have worked for me. If you do the same and your arms fall off, don't be typing your complaints into the comments. You probably won't be doing that. You know what I mean? Be sensible, seek proper advice. My MRI showed that I'd aged like Dr. Ross. You might be Dr. Green. This is the biggest one for me, and it's nothing fancy. I just got mobile, because I'd gotten to a point where I'd stopped hard exercise, and then gentle exercise, and then any exercise. I wasn't even walking the dogs in case I got five minutes from the house and couldn't make it back. So the advice I got was move. Be sensible, but move. And not doing so just because it was uncomfortable was doing me no favors. Obviously, if going for a walk leaves you lying in the gutter calling for a paramedic, this isn't gonna work. But I could tolerate walking, especially with the confidence I now had of knowing that nothing was really that serious going on back there. And so the first thing I started doing was taking the dog out for 20 minutes the second I woke up in the morning. Literally out of bed, get dressed, grab the dog out the door. 
Previously, I had been gingerly taking ages to get out of bed and then creeping downstairs gently to sit still and eat Cocoa Pops. Now I'm up and I'm mobile and I will then go back out after lunch for another 45 minute walk. In 10 days, I went from panicking that my back would spasm every step I took to now not giving it a second thought. In fact, I ran a 10 mile race last weekend, granted very slowly, in fact I came second from last, but I ran it and did it with almost no discomfort. And if I did it again today, I'm pretty sure I'd be pain free and twice as fast. A few weeks before this, I couldn't get from one room to another. So the advice was, your body, your spine is designed to be mobile and keep you mobile, give it the opportunity to do so. Next up is flexibility, which I work on as soon as I come back in the house from that first walk. Now, I have been stretching while my back was bad, but I was lucky enough that a physio contacted me, who'd seen me moaning on the same podcast as the surgeon, and he corrected the mistakes I'd been making. What I had been doing was trying to stretch my back where it hurt, and then increase my flexibility in general with the goal of being very flexible. He got me instead to stretch the areas actually more likely to be causing a problem than my back itself, which was not actually tight from a lack of flexibility, it was tight from the overreaction to pain in that area, and then also to stretch the right areas more often, but less aggressively. So for me, it was hip flexors, psoas, piriformis, glutes, those were the areas identified by my chiropractor in person and then the physio in conversation as being actually tight to the point of restricting my range of motion. And particularly in the case of my psoas, being tight enough to pull on my back and probably be a significant part of the pain there. Again, I'm not an expert, and I had experts check me out in order to make sure I was stretching the right things. That said, here's an example of some of the stuff I am now doing. I do a psoas sofa stretch, almost the only way I can feel a proper deep stretch into that muscle, making sure I include a lateral bend with the upper body because the psoas attaches to the vertebrae in the lower back. I'm doing pigeon poses and variations on it. I'm doing the wall stretch from my quads made famous at the moment by knees over toes guy. I'm doing plenty of work with my massage gun as well. It is now something I do every single day, but I stretch only to the point where my body is moving through that range of motion I want to have and no further. I then finish all that off with two things that just take some of the pressure off my back and allow the muscles there to just chill out a bit. First is the cobra pose, which just releases some of the pressure on the discs in the spine. And then I hang upside down. And I've had the upside down machine for ages, but I just got out of the habit of using it. And I'll spend five minutes, two or three times a day sometimes, just relaxing upside down. You can get the same benefit by just hanging from your arms, but obviously you are having to use some muscles in order to do that and not fall off. Here, I can relax every single part of me. And when I go back the right way up, I am literally decompressed. And then strength. And again, don't blindly follow me, but this is what I'm doing. Now, I'd seen a couple of different physios locally where my back was at its worst, and they had me doing things like core strengthening by carrying out short isometric contractions. Mm. When I explained this to my helpful physio, he asked if I'd ever trained core and abs previously, and I explained I had with things like hanging knee raises or cable crunches. So he asked whether I felt there was huge value in five second isometric contractions for a core that had spent 50 years doing rather more exciting stuff. He had a point. I needed to get back in the gym that I'd been terrified of stepping foot in for months. I needed to increase the strength in my core, in my hip flexors, in my glutes, so that those muscles can work properly and support my back. And the way to increase strength in muscles is the way I've always worked to increase strength in muscles by shifting weight, whether it's barbell, dumbbell, or my own. Again, I'm not going crazy. There's no 500 pound deadlifts in my program right now, but I am doing things like dumbbell Romanian deadlifts, Nordic curls, body weight back extensions, all posterior chain stuff and then planks and plank variations and hanging knee raises for my core. And I've reintroduced things like the ski erg and the rower back into my training at a low intensity. Again, things I'd been terrified of going anywhere near and just hadn't used in ages. In short, I'm now being sensible, but I am working out the whole of my body in a way that I know will make it stronger and more mobile because it always has in the past. Right, last two things, sitting or rather not sitting anymore. I actually purchased an ergonomic chair when my back was at its worst. I've come to believe there is no such thing. If you're sat down, you're compromised. Talking to camera like this is literally the only time I normally sit like this. Bizarrely, I've had this standing desk for ages. I just got lazy and wasn't standing at it. 
The ergonomic chair has gone and I'm now stood here, or if I am sat down, it's on this stool, which actually goes up so you can sort of sit, lean on it, so that when I am using it as a seat, my hip flexors are still not massively shortened. I also make sure that if I do sit on it like that, it's never more than six or seven minutes before going back to standing. I used to get out of my ergonomic chair and just feel incredibly stiff and think it was standing up and straightening out that was making my back ache. It wasn't. It was the sitting down that made my back bad and then standing up that was exposing that. In fact, the only other time that I sit down now is for a few minutes at a time to eat and 30 or 40 minutes of guitar practice each day. But even there, I've got myself a high stool on which to sit so I'm not scrunched up on it the way I was. For the first time in many, many weeks, I can now get back to practicing. Which I do need to do. And last of all, I just treat my back to a variety of things that's hard to say definitely help, but if nothing else, keep me focused on it as an area that needs my attention forever. I take a sauna four times a week. <coughs> Leaves me feeling incredibly relaxed. I also use my red light therapy device in my lower back three or four times a week in the evenings just while watching TV for 10 or 15 minutes. And I made the commitment to see my chiropractor for sports massage every couple of weeks as a matter of routine now, rather than only going when something was wrong. Also, she's a fan of stuff like acupuncture. Does that work? I don't know. But I do know that I leave feeling much less tension in my lower back than when I arrive. Which of those things makes the biggest difference? Impossible to say. Doesn't really matter to me. They are about me just being someone that pays attention to keeping my back in good shape instead of being someone who just waits for it to become a problem and then tries to fix it. Okay, so that is it. I keep mobile. I stretch to maintain full range of motion. I keep things strong the way I always would have kept something strong. I don't sit down and I treat my back to a little TLC. The most important part of all of this for me has been understanding that the back is designed to move and responding to problems there by locking everything down was the opposite of what I should have been doing. I now treat my back like a 70s parent. I let it play outside as nature intended. I smack it around the head in the supermarket if it misbehaves and stick needles in it when it gets stressed. That analogy doesn't make any sense. 